Here we are at the Staunton Mall, a desperate mall teetering on the edge of collapse. For this visit, I'm going to tone down the soundtrack quite a bit, because as we tour this mall, I want you to hear this mall, hear it for what it is. Walking into this mall to hear no canned music and just the buzzing of lights is kind of unsettling to say the least. Rather than give my personal thoughts and feelings for this one, I'll stagger the background information on this mall throughout the video and let you form your own thoughts on this mall. Staunton Mall began life as the Staunton Plaza in 1968, with Montgomery Ward followed quickly by J.C. Penney and Woolworths. The mall also boasted a people's drug as a junior anchor, as well as a Safeway grocery store. The open air at Plaza was a relatively simple design, meant to service the blue collar town of Staunton. When the mall first opened, it suffered from one major issue shared with Fort Chiswell outlets down the road. Staunton Mall had no direct access to Interstate 81, nearest exits being well over a mile or more away. Fortunately, however, VDOT addressed this and built a spur freeway off of I-81. This spur freeway was part of a larger proposed project to build a freeway around the west side of Staunton which currently stands as a Super 2 freeway today. Although access is still relatively awkward, this helped tremendously with Staunton Mall's longevity. The Staunton Mall would be enclosed in 1986, and a large addition would be built, bringing Leggett to the mall. However, as a trade-off, Montgomery Ward's direct access to the front of the parking lot was destroyed by this new expansion. But the Montgomery Ward would cling to life all the way into 2001, living on as a concept store referred to as Focus. Stephen Berry's would operate briefly in the Ward space after they closed, but we all know what happened to them. Since then, the Ward space has been vacant and is currently utilized for storage. Back in 1982, Safeway would close, unable to compete with Food Town, an early version of Food Line. Safeway also suffered from union issues at the time. The space would change ownership a number of times, becoming a Sears surplus briefly, followed by goodies. Goodies would remain until a company called Stage brought, bought them out and closed their location in 2009. It then became a Gold's Gym briefly, and was last occupied by Staunton Health and Fitness. Today, that space sits vacant. Woolworth would also see high turnover in its space when it closed. For a brief period, Stone and Thomas opened in 1997 but only lasted a year before Elder Beerman bought them out and closed this location. Stage stores, however, would open a Peebles in that location, which would explain why Goodies was closed down. Around the same time Stone and Thomas was open, the mall itself would see the removal of a fountain, as well as the relocation of the food court back into the theaters toward the back side of the mall. Unfortunately, Peebles decided to throw in the towel and closed its doors for the last time in 2018. With Belk and JC Penney as the remaining anchors, 
occupancy would dwindle down over the 2000s and 2010s. Currently, occupancy hovers around 30% or less, with a handful of small businesses, most national chains centralized around JCPenney and the former Peebles. The theater, briefly mentioned earlier, is still open as of the making of this video. The owners, however, have announced plans to revitalize the mall, one of their plans of which includes demalling the property or demolishing it entirely in favor of an outdoor lifestyle center. It would appear that the lifestyle center is the way management wants to go, as maintenance has suffered considerably in the mall. The moment you walk in the doors, you're hit with a strong, musty smell that is comparable to the Laurel Mall near Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Water damage spots the ceiling here and there, and buckets are left out to catch water. The clock is ticking for this property, and if you want to see it, you better hurry. Some malls continue to surprise me as I find them in conditions like these. Staunton Mall left me with an impression that I only felt at Century 3 Mall and Oak Hollow Mall. Even though I had never been to it, I feel disappointed to find the mall in such a neglected state with no shops around to wander in. That, accompanied by the distant talking and laughter of patrons of whom are just out of sight of the camera, are creepy and unsettling as it seemingly helps me paint a picture to when this mall was more lively and successful. As we near the end of this tour, I would like to thank you for joining me on this walk around Staunton Mall. As always, like or dislike the video and tell me about your thoughts and feelings about this place. How did you feel touring this property with me? I am curious to know everyone else's thoughts. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you and extend an invitation for you to subscribe. As always, I have a lot more malls to take you to, and up next is a very different and odd place in North Carolina. If you want to continue the discussion about Staunton Mall, then do check the comments below for an invite to the Dead Malls Discord server, which is founded and curated by Sal of the Expedition Log series. You can chat with me, Sal, Faded Commerce, Unicom Productions, Raw and Real Retail, DeadMalls.com, and many more. The server is always growing, and we'll be happy to see you join us. And last but not least, I would like to extend a special thanks to Sky City, the retail blog which helped me find a lot of history about this mall. Go to skycity2.blogspot.com to find a much more thorough write-up on this mall. If I missed it in this video, then they are bound to have it. Until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Staunton Mall farewell.